on into Athletes Unplugged. This is the show that goes beyond the game. We let loose, we have fun, but most importantly, we find out what makes the biggest names in sports the biggest superheroes in the world. This is Athletes Unplugged. Hey guys, we are so thrilled now to welcome in three-time National Player of the Year, four-time All-American, two-time Olympic medalist, and three-time Olympian, USA softball pitcher, Kat Osterman. Kat, thank you so much for being with us here on Athletes Unplugged. Where are you? What's sort of your life update? What have you been up to sort of the last couple of months that we've been in quarantine? So um, home is New Braunfels, Texas now. Um, my husband and I have lived here for about three years. So uh, for the most part, we're either here or at my parents' house. Um, fortunate enough, right before this all hit, they actually moved about 35 minutes from us. So oh, wow, that's nice good. to be able to, to go see that in a little bit. And um, they have a pool, so we get to go hang out and feel a little bit of normal. But uh, for the most part, it's, it's training at home, a lot of Zoom calls, a lot of meetings. Um, and then obviously, you know, with everything getting postponed and whatnot, it's, it's planning what life looks like as soon as we are allowed to kind of, you know, return to somewhat of a, of a normal, just trying to stay safe and healthy. Um, I think that as an athlete, that's the biggest part is you want to go be normal, but at the same time, you know, that long-term it's better if you can figure out how to stay healthy and, and keep yourself, um, you know, as protected as possible. You know, you mentioned just everything changing with the Olympics. And for the last, I guess, year or so, you've had a lot of different life changes. When you mentioned that you sort of are looking ahead, trying to answer those big questions about your life, what it looks like, what, what does it, like, what is this for you right now? Because you come out of retirement, uh, you know, you had to leave your job at Texas State and then the Olympics are postponed. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously if I had stuck to plan, July would have probably been the end of my softball career. And, um, you know, that's what I came out of retirement for was for, to, to play in the Olympics one more time and help a younger generation, hopefully have a, a shot at a gold medal. And, um, after that, you know, I had already decided to step away from Texas state. There's a nonprofit here in Austin, RBI Austin that I'm very, um, involved in, but more from just a spokesperson side because of NCAA rules, I can't be hands-on and, I was looking forward to obviously hopefully putting my hands in that and, and instructing those girls. And there are just some other things that were in the works to kind of start life outside of coaching. And obviously with an Olympics postponed a year, it went from, okay, now I have to figure out how to keep playing because I was already behind the eight ball a little bit in game situations just because I had retired. And when I came out, I didn't play again. I simply just trained. Now we haven't seen anything like this before with athletes unlimited when you looked at sort of what was going to be brought to the table, what maybe excited you about the league? And then maybe what was sort of like your biggest question mark about how things and the rules are going to go down? Yeah. Um, well, I think it's always exciting to be part of something new. Um, I think it's really cool that, you know, the teams change and you get ranked based on points and you really have to earn your standing, which was really cool because it's real life fantasy sports, in my opinion. Like you see where you rank on one to 56 and you can't really complain. I mean, I'm crossing my fingers. I'm not like the coldest <laughs> that gets picked last, but yeah, you, right. you can't complain because your numbers are right there. Um, not to mention, I think it allows all of us, as I mentioned, to play with different people. So you're not divided into four teams and playing with those same 15, 16 people every week. Um, unless your team happens to get selected the same, which... I'm going to take it. happen, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to guess the odds are slim. Um, but I think the, the hardest part and the one part, not necessarily I questioned, but just adjusting to is I'm very, um, I don't want to say picky, but I like being able to establish a relationship with catchers and really be able to work with somebody. And obviously if your catchers change week to week, that's going to be a challenge. But at the same time, what's more of an example of being mentally tough and adjusting to adversity than a situation like this and being able to um, use this experience later on to talk to kids about adjusting to adversity. And if right. your shortstop gets thrown into catcher because your catcher gets hurt, well, like this is how you can adjust to it because we're going to have to do it week to week. So um, I'm pretty excited to see how it all unfolds and it'll be a very uh, big learning experience for all of us. Yeah, sort of par for the course, I guess, in a year of unprecedented experiences. Now you get to sort of, I guess, test out your flexibility in, in game situation, which you haven't before. And you've played with so many people over the years, and you've coached so many women. What do you think that you could bring, almost from a gamesmanship perspective, 
with the fact that you've coached two athletes unlimited, especially, you know, if you are drafting teams, if you are one of those players who's in that position? Yeah, I think um, the coaching aspect is just kind of, I've learned different perspectives of the game. And I think until you're in a coaching role, you don't necessarily branch out of what you saw as a player. Um, So it's being able to know in situations what hitters tendencies are and who's better at doing you know, going opposite field or hitting behind the runner if you have, if we have that ability to be able to substitute the way we're going to. And on top of it, when you come to pick teams, then sometimes I hate to let too many secrets out, but you pick people based on just not letting the other team have them yeah. uh, and being able to just kind of keep uh, yourself in the best position. But I think there's some things coaching both with like the DH and flex rule that I've learned, but also just being able to, to see tendencies and um, you know, how different people approach the game and, and, and how they swing and how they hit and how they pitch and just being able to uh, use those into our favor. But I definitely have way more perspective of all the aspects of the game after 12 years in coaching than I did coming out of college where I only knew one way and you think that's the right way and you don't realize how many different ways can be the right way. Um, I just want to track back to a couple of things you said before about the Olympics and just sort of the idea that, you know, you're going to go to Tokyo in 2021. You've already competed at two Olympics. You've won two medals. What do you think maybe has changed about your perspective as it comes to competing on an international stage and what you think might be different when you do go and, and you're at the opening ceremonies next year and, and you get to be a part of it all again? Obviously, I still love competing. I still love being in the circle. Um, I still fist pump on the big strikeouts and thrive for those moments. Um, I think the biggest things that changed is the perspective of the outcome. Um, I know early in my career, it was just so driven on performance and winning. And obviously, as you mentioned earlier, having more into my life now with a husband and a stepdaughter and family and and a life. um, I know at the end of the day, whether I win or lose isn't really going to matter. Um, in the grand scheme of things. And so, you know, you talk about how it's going to be different. In 2008, we lost and I came home swearing that loser of the gold medal game was like attached to my name for the rest of my life. And um, the amount of times I've had to talk about that has been minimal. And usually it's a learning, it's a learning experience for other people, as opposed to someone just saying, oh yeah, you were the pitcher that started that game, huh? Um, So you learn that, you know, those, they don't define you. Um, They might be you know, things you're not obviously happy about in your life or in your career, but they don't define you. As far as the Olympics themselves, uh, I think I'm still going to be very overwhelmed with emotion being there again. Um, Obviously, when you have a 12-year layoff, you not necessarily forget what those emotions were like because you don't, but since you haven't experienced them in 12 years, it's going to be a very emotional moment to be over there and just be able to experience it again. I mean, I never thought that I was going to be able to do that for a third time. Um, you know, in 2005, when they announced we were done after 08, I was completely, you know, I hadn't dreamt of it again. I didn't think about it. And even in 2016, when they were reinstated, I still didn't think about it. So um, there was a long period of time where it was not a thought process in my mind. And now being in the thick of it and preparing for it, um, just there's a lot of pride in representing the United States, but USA softball and the standard and the, the tradition that they have. So for me, I'm really excited to be able to do it for a third time and just bring that experience that I have from being over there to these other athletes who haven't been able to experience it yet. That's got to feel so surreal to be able to go back after already winning two medals and, and just having that perspective, as you mentioned, just, you know, what would be maybe the best piece of advice that, that you feel you could give them after everything you've gone through? Well, I think the Olympics specifically, emotionally, it's take what you've experienced at the World Series, World Championships, whatever your highest competition was and times it by 100 because you obviously, you all of a sudden realize the whole globe can be watching this game. And when you think about that, it becomes like this massive, yeah, (laughs) either either be ready for that or just don't think about the whole globe watching one of the two. Um, But I think as a professional athlete, the one thing I learned... I don't want to say the hard way, just a little bit later in my professional career was the more accountable you are to staying in shape, to what you eat, to taking care of yourself, the longer your career could be. Um, 
you know, a lot of people know I said I was going to retire, I think in 2013, 12 or 13. And, um, when I had made that decision, I started working out with a trainer and said, okay, it's my last year. I want to make it my best year. And obviously I got in phenomenal shape and pitched really, really well. And it kind of put the light bulb on that was like, okay, maybe I'm not done yet. Um, and so then I played three more years after that. And, you know, I think if I had done that from a younger age, um, maybe straight out of college, instead of just trying to wing, staying in shape on my own, obviously would have probably been more healthy and just able to persevere through it a little bit more. Um, because even now, I know that's what's pushing me or keeping me kind of mentally sane for the whole year delay. I think a lot of people are like, oh my God, are you going to do it? I'm like, I'm, I'm in shape already. I can only yeah. get better shape in the next 12 months. Yeah, like I'm here. I got more time now to refine everything at this point. It's actually helpful in an odd way, I'm sure. Right. Right. So the more accountable you are to controlling what you can control, I think the more you're going to get out of, of your professional career. And I mean, that's in life in general too, but I know as professional athletes, we get out of college and we think I'm free. I don't, I don't have to lift. I don't have to run. And it's like, okay, but you should. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you a couple questions, first of all, about yourself. You know, we know so much about you in your professional world and, and what you've done in softball, but you know, if you could be any other profession, what would you do? I don't know. I would like to think, uh, actually a lawyer, because I like to argue. That would, I was about to say, I'd like to say, I think I'd be a doctor or a nurse or something, but then a lawyer, I'd be arguing in the court of law somewhere. You have one pump up song for the rest of your life. You can only listen to this one song. What would it be? It can't be touched by Roy Jones Jr. Best TV show. Grey's Anatomy. I've seen every single episode. And unlike everyone else, I don't get bored with the outlandish stuff that they come up with. Okay, and finally, what is your biggest pet peeve? Ooh. The funny thing is that, like, a pet peeve is dirty area, but then I'm a messy person. <laughs> I'm, like, a messy person in my room or my part of the room, but the rest of it has to be clean, so. Um, yeah. I'm constantly straightening up countertops and desks and drawers around our house, so. Awesome. All right. Well, now um, we're going to enter into the next phase of this interview, All which right. is the trivia phase. Yes. Number one, how many points in Athletes Unlimited do pitchers earn for recording an out? Ooh, four. Boom. You got that one. Okay. Let's see what else we got. Two more. How many points does a team earn for a win? 20. A little bit higher? 40. A little bit higher? 50. Boom, you got it. They earned 50 points. That is a lot of points. And finally, if you get this, you win the entire thing. How many points do players earn for every inning they're in the lead? Oh, that's the one. Is it 10? It's either 10 or 20. 10. Let's go 10. Boom, you got it. No problem for you. Thank you so much for joining us here on Athletes Unplugged. Good luck this season. We can't wait to watch you dominate on the field. Thank you. Excited. Let's get it. Let's get it started. Want to be featured on Athletes Unplugged? Share with us one of your favorite memories from playing sports and tag us on all social channels at AU Pro Sports. And remember to like, follow, and subscribe. Till then, be unlimited. Be, be unlimited. Be unlimited. Be, be unlimited.